Hi, everyone. Thanks for tuning in and welcome to the award ceremony for the Mange Olsson Foundation Scholarship and the Mange Olsson Award. Yeah, we have a really long and an eventful night to look forward to. And we have really interesting young sailors that we're going to give uh, some nice prizes. And we also have internationally recognized sailors. I'd say the best sailors in the world will be in this show tonight. It is. And the person who is receiving this award in 2020 is joining a list of distinguished sailors from all over the world who reached the absolute top of sailing. To name a few that we will be talking to today, actually, uh, is Carolyn Brower, Grant Dalton. Ben Ainsley. Ben Ainsley. Oh, we're not going to talk to him, actually, <laughs> but he is one of the few who's, been, uh, who's got this prize. So, uh, yes. Yeah, the, the list goes on. Um, I think this is the ninth or tenth edition of the prize giving ceremony. And uh, first off to, I guess, the news of 2020, which is not so fun. We will be doing this as a digital event, which is a little bit different from what we have doing in, been doing in previous years. It's only myself, Frida, and Gustav Morin here in the studio, but that doesn't make the list of guests any shorter. We have a bunch of pre-recorded videos and interviews and a few of them being done live. And some will be joining us here and some from all over the world. But one thing is for sure, we're keeping a very good distance. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, but let us start with uh, an interview with one of uh, Mange's friends and one of the guys he spent a lot of time with in all the projects he did in the Volvo Ocean Race. This is uh, Richard Bricius. Thank you. And very welcome, everyone, to this the Magnus Olsson Prize 2020. It's a special year. And Magnus Olsson, he was a very special person. And we are here to celebrate him, but to celebrate the new young sailors. And Magnus, he stood for so many things, but maybe he's most known because he was a team player. He was the type who checked his ego at the door, and he really prioritized the team more than anything. And this he exemplified so well on this epic leg on Ericsson 3, when he suddenly became the skipper for the first time in his life, but he led as a team member. The story goes that a big storm hit the whole fleet during this leg from Singapore up to Qingdao. Qingdao. Ericsson 3 got a big hole in the hull, but the crew, they managed to stop the water from flood flooding the whole boat, and they limped into a little harbor on the northern tip of Taiwan. And in this little harbor, I remember still Magnus coming towards me on the dock, and he's saying, Richard, I see so many opportunities. And that was his positive uh, side that came out. But it also was him as a team player. He only saw ways forward. And Magnus, he was then uh, the leader of this difficult situation. The boat was almost sinking. The crew, some of them left the team. But he said, we're going to get going. The expert said it's going to take three months. Magnus said it's going to take 10 days. Sure enough, 10 days later, the boat was in the water. And they started uh, chasing the rest of the fleet, finished the leg in Qingdao. And then the magic started to happen. They passed one boat. They passed another boat. And then they made this joint decision on board, led by Magnus, to go away from the fleet. And a few days later, they were in the lead. They sailed around Cape Horn as the leader, the most epic leg of this race, and came into Rio de Janeiro as the winner. And Magnus, he was there in the most joyous moment of his life, I think, seeing that as a, if you just act as a team player, even if you're a leader, then you can reach success. And Gustav, you were there. Yeah, well, I, uh, I was. I was one of the thirsty guys there, you could see uh, on the podium. Yeah, you were the one drinking <laughs> champagne, right? Yeah, yeah, all of us were. That was uh, an amazing experience. And I know that was one of the biggest uh, defeats Magnus had uh, in, his, uh, in his career. He held that one really, really high because it was such, an, such a crazy thing to do. It was the, the miracle uh, when, we, uh, when we got that boat uh, together after 10 days after that extreme event almost sinking so uh, yeah that was um, that was fun 
<laughs> and that is just one of many stories that you can tell about Magnus. And uh, it's only one of many that we will hear tonight. I mean, some were there during the time when he lived and could inspire in person. And some, like myself, have been lucky enough to be part of, be part of his legacy. Yeah. Next, we will listen to one of the recipients of the prize, who is, um, of course, world famous, like all the recipients so far. It's uh, Torben Grell, interviewed by... Uh, Guy Swindles. I know, the voice of sailing, right? Exactly. Now, this is going to be a few words from Brazil, where uh, we will learn something from one of the best sailors in the world. Well, now we get a chance to talk to the first ever winner of the uh, Magnus Olsen Award, Torben Grail, from his boat in Brazil, I'm delighted to say. Um, now, Torben, welcome and thank you. Uh, you were the first winner of, of, of this award. What, what did you make of it when you won and what have you made of it in the years since? First, uh, it was a great honor to be uh, nominated the first uh, uh, recipient of this uh, very nice uh, award. And uh, I think uh, having been on a team with Magnus, uh, uh, you know, I felt very, very uh, you know, lucky to, to, to be there with him. And I think he was uh, part of convincing uh the team to get me in the first place and he was a great supporter although we were in different boats on the same team but uh i think uh his uh, whole attitude is it was always very positive very friendly very trying to push the project forward and uh and that uh, made things uh, so much easier and uh, then uh, after uh, he left us uh, and, the, and the prize was uh, uh, stated, it was uh, such a, a nice thing to be the, the first uh, uh, one to receive the prize. So it, for me, it was very emotional. The first time we went to Stockholm and we had the, the, the ceremony there and uh, uh, we have been in contact for very long for uh, 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 and I was also helping with the with SCA project at that time which was uh, uh, his uh, his job at that uh, at that uh, just before he he left us so uh, he left a, a big uh, message for all of us you know? Uh, his, his big smile and always uh, positive attitude. So I, I learned a lot of uh, of, uh, of him, the way he 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 lived his life, and uh, so made it made uh, everyone uh, around him a better person as well. Well, thank you, Torben, for sharing your memories. Of course, that was with Team Ericsson, so important in the two thousand and eight nine. Volvo Ocean Race when you won it and we had the remarkable scenes on, on um, Ericsson 3 as well. Um, now, obviously, you've done quite a lot of team building. Do you have any tips for how to, how to put together the best possible team? Well, I think uh, uh, you have to leave uh, uh, the, the, the people some, some room so they can perform well uh, instead of uh, trying to centralise everything on yourself. Yeah. And uh, I think uh, delegating and also you know, making sure things are, are happening, I think it's quite important. And being always there when people need you. What was uh, somehow easy for me was that I, I know so much uh, about uh, all the positions uh, uh, on the boat and about boats. So it's very easy to talk with people. I think the harder part uh, in a big team is always uh, to, to uh, the relationship between souls, between people, you know, and, and, and in the Volvo, it was not different. It was like, I think the technical side was much easier than dealing with 
with with uh, with the people, but but it's it's a challenge and, and it's a nice challenge. You know, I, I was very proud that in both my campaigns uh, we had very little crew changes. In Ericsson, actually, we we did the whole race with the same crew. Uh, in Brazil, one as we didn't know what to expect from the Southern Ocean. Nobody of the Brazilian side had always experienced that. Uh, uh, it was important to have some people with some knowledge about the Southern Ocean, and uh, so it was already scheduled to 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 have some changes for those legs, and uh, we had. Uh, the presence of Knut, uh, which was very helpful in the whole project and uh, also in the Southern Ocean. And then we later had the inclusion of Marcel, which also was very experienced in the Southern Ocean. But uh, to sail around with the same crew like we did in Ericsson was quite remarkable and I, I, I was very proud of that. Talking of remarkable, You've got Olympic golds, you won the Volvo Ocean Race, you've sailed in the America's Cup. This year's winner, Peter Burling, has won the America's Cup, won Olympic gold and sailed in the Volvo Race. What did you make of the news that, that he was the latest winner of the, of the Magnus Olsen Award? I think it was very well deserved. Uh, Peter is a very fine uh, sailor, some uh, huge uh, achievements in in a very young career. So I think uh, he has still so many years ahead of him with those uh, many chances of winning the round the world race. He's a very complete sailor, can sail from Olympic uh, boats to this uh, big uh, technological machines they sail in the America's Cup these days. And and, and I was also uh, uh, very good in the, the ocean race campaign, so I think it's well deserved to have such a, a, a fine sailor receiving the, the Magnus Award. Torben Grail, the first ever winner of the Magnus Olsen Award, thank you very much indeed. It was my pleasure. Torben Grail, the first guy to get uh, the Manga Award, and he was, as he said, also um, um, working very closely together with Manga for two years. But uh, now we're going to go to this year's winner, and, and you're going to tell us a bit more about the prize first, right? I will, but I want to mention, so you have as long as possible uh, to get your chance to actually ask questions live to Peter Burling. He's going to be with us from New Zealand uh, in person, so make sure to go into the chat. It's in one of these corners uh, yeah. of your screen. And you just click on that little queue and you uh, send the questions and they will rapidly fly over to New Zealand. And hopefully your question will be answered uh, in just a few minutes. Yeah. And now to the price. I think we were so excited to get this evening started, so we forgot to tell you what the price is actually about. So. I will, I will read the definition so I make sure to get it right. Uh, the Mange Olson Memorial Foundation annually recognizes an internationally established sailor, organization or project that has contributed to success at the highest level of sailing. I think it's the perfect uh, definition for what we have seen in both um, Torben Grell, but now also in Peter Berling and in all the recipients so far. Definitely. And now we will get the story about Peter Berling. Let's have a beer if you got one. Kick back and enjoy a good video about one of the best sailors we have now today. To find the winner of Mange Olsen Prize 2020, we had to travel all the way down under to New Zealand. Yeah, so I got into sailing pretty young. Uh, down in my hometown of Tauranga. So yeah, my dad was into sailing when he was uh, a kid and um, thought it'd be a good thing for, well, probably my brother first to learn and then I was kind of just dragged along and I uh, really got into it there. And yeah, I think as a young kid, that, that freedom you get of being able to go out on the water and you know, hoon around and you know, some small boats is pretty cool. Already at an early age, Peter knew what he wanted to achieve. Probably Team New Zealand or around the world and stuff like that. He was always really, really competitive when he was young. Always liked to be the first at anything he did. I hate losing when, you know, you could have done something about it or, you know, you haven't really put in enough work. 
he won his first international title at the World Championships in 420 in 2006. This was the starting point of an unparalleled international career. Yeah, that was actually the first World Champs I ever won in the Canary Islands. Yeah, so I've been pretty lucky to be involved in some pretty cool teams, you know, throughout my career. Um, you know, I think the first one when I first got to the Olympics, sailing a 470 with a, a guy, Carl Evans, was you know, pretty incredible as a young guy to, to kind of make it to the Olympics uh, early on in your career. After the Olympics in Beijing 2008, he starts cooperating with his friend Blair Chuk in the spectacular 49er. And it's a real success. Together, they will go on to win six world championships in 49er. Look at the difference. New Zealand on a roll. Burling and Toot putting on an absolute masterclass of how to do it. Before the Olympics in Rio, they had 28 regattas without a loss. Um, you know, it was incredible to get a, a first Olympic medal in London um, you know, and back that up, winning a, a gold in Rio. Gold in Rio to the New Zealanders! Yeah, I think there's a lot of things I'm super proud of in my career, but you know, probably one of the standouts was you know, going to Rio and you know, winning a gold medal for, for our country. You know, I think it's something that you know, when you're a young guy, you grow up and that's kind of the pinnacle of you know, small boat sailing and you know, to also be you know, team captain. and how to carry the flag into the, the stadium in Rio and then probably put together one of our, our best performances is you know, something I'm incredibly proud of. And then kind of been involved in Team New Zealand a, a lot and you know, with a successful cup campaign you know, going into 2017. Life hasn't slowed down for Pete Burling and Blair Chuk since they won sailing gold at Rio. Rest and recreation is on the back burner. But it's not just Pete and Blair anymore. They're now part of a team Emirates, Team New Zealand. It's just very, very different. You know, the America's Cup. Together with the Mange Olson Prize winner 2018 Grant Dalton, Peter wins his first America's Cup. Oh, it's just sinking in and, you know, as a Kiwi growing up back home, you know, watching our country compete for the America's Cup and, you know, to be able to do that at a pretty young age and to bring it back home is, you know, just an unreal feeling. More recently, uh, also doing a, a lap around the globe in the, the ocean race. Pete joins Team Brunel, and the challenges are different in a round-the-world race. No, it's definitely you know, a pretty incredible experience sailing around the world. Um, you're a more well-rounded sailor you know, after you know, having competed in all the different sides of it. So, really cool part, you know, seeing Cape Horn. Um, it's you know, a place that not many people in the world really will ever see like, with their own eyes. So, um, I think it just shows you, you know, how powerful the ocean is down there and how powerful the weather is. And, you know, it's definitely a place where humans probably shouldn't really be. <laughs> you know, it's really cool to do, and, but I don't think you'd want to you know, do it every day. But you know, also just sending it down one for you know, 10 days or something uh, like we did. You know, an incredible race and you know, it's something that you know, I think, you know, just keeping pushing the technology, you know, keeping the boats you know, at the leading edge of, of the sport and you know, hopefully keeping the racing close will just keep drawing people back in. Facing the last leg, there are still three boats that can win the Ocean Race 2017-18. Pete and his team Brunel ends up in third place. Back home, after the Round the World adventure, Pete and his companion Blair are taking on new projects. You know, plenty of different projects, but I you know, love the, the challenge of the range. One of the really cool things about sailing around the world is you, know, you get to go down to the Southern Ocean. Yeah, one of the amazing things you see down there is the albatross. They're a good metre on my wingspan, uh -huh. you know, being up around three metres. 
you're there pushing the boat hard, you're tired, and then you just see these albatross cruise past you and they just make it look so easy. Yeah, it makes you feel pretty good when you see them. In the last 12 years, we've lost two thirds of the breeding population of the Antipodean albatross, you know, two a day. It really is on the fast track to extinction unless we intervene and learn more about these birds and, you know, try and slow the rate down. One of the females they tracked last year did 178,000 kilometers over a nine month period uh, before she disappeared, unfortunately. But, you know, looking at how long it takes us to sail a similar kind of distance, it did take uh, years. Blair and myself have, well, a little over a year ago now, set up a marine conservation charity called Low Ocean, and you know it's a real passion of ours. You know the ocean is where we spend a lot of our time, and you know we really feel like we aren't looking after it well enough. And you know at Live Ocean we really want to amplify and accelerate, you know, promising science and action around you know looking after it better. Yeah, I think if New Zealanders can't lead this issue to the world, then I'm not sure who will. The similarities between Pete and Mang Ye are striking. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't have any memories of Magnus myself, um, you know, other than the, the legend that is. Um, you know, he's uh, sounded like a larger than life kind of uh, guy that, you know, made a, had a massive influence on the ocean race. And, you know, definitely, you know, I've got some pretty fond memories of the ocean race, and uh, it's pretty uh, exciting that, you know, this is in line with that. The Mang Ye Ulsan Prize 2020 is awarded to Peter Burling from New Zealand. Mange always said that he would probably become an albatross when he uh, left this earth. So it was, uh, was nice that uh, Pete has, a, has, has an interest in keeping them well uh, and safe, alive, flying further. But now I'm getting really ramped up because we are about to get a live chat with Peter Burling. If technology is with us. Yes, and I hope it is because he is really on top of things now. I mean, he is in the most extreme race we have and he is on top of all the gadgets and techniques and all the high tech you can get in the sailing world. So let's uh, hand it over to New Zealand. And we have them behind us here on the screen. Hi, guys. Welcome to the show. Hello, Stockholm. Welcome here from uh, a beautiful sunny Summer, summary uh, city of sales. Man of the moment, Peter Burling beside me here, and we've got our little awards presentation ceremony about to carry on. Uh, Zoe and Oliver from the Royal New Zealand Yacht Squadron are holding the award here. And Brad Jackson, Volvo Ocean Race legend, is going to do the nomination. Brad. Thanks, Martin. Uh, firstly, I'd like to say uh, what an honor it is to be representing the um, Magnus Olsen Foundation. Uh, normally uh, one of Magnus's boys or Vika would be here or be presenting the award, but this year we have Ollie and Zoe um, to present the award. I had the, the privilege of uh, working, sailing with and against Magnus over the years on a few different campaigns and um, you know, it's like everyone who's met Magnus, it's uh, your, uh, your life is better for it, for sure. A great guy. So uh, thank you to uh, Richard and Carl Henrik and Vika for doing this. It's great. Now on to uh, this year's recipient, Peter. There's a long list of achievements here. Peter's a world-class athlete who has achieved unmatched success at a young age and in several disciplines in the sport of sailing. His list of achievements is truly impressive. Olympic gold medal 2016, Olympic silver medal 2012, victory in America's Cup as America's Cup helmsman 2017, podium finish as a watch leader in the ocean race 2018, he's a six-time 49er class world champion, a two-time 420 class world champion, he also won the Moth World Champs in 2015, he's already won the Rolex Sailor of the Year twice in 2015-2017. With a sharp mind and unflappable nature, Peter's an inspiration and role model to young sailors across the world. Through his personality, skills and determination, Peter's a tremendous leadership asset to any team. With the ability to lift his teammates to reach the extraordinary, just as Magnus was able to do. On top of all that, he's also a very humble and nice guy. 
I'd like to ask Zoe and Ollie to present Pete with the award. Well, congratulations, Peter. Lovely to be sharing and yet another accomplishment with you. What does this one mean? Yeah, it's definitely a pretty special one. Um, yeah, I wasn't lucky enough to you know, really get to know Magnus in person, but you know, for everyone I talk to, it's just uh, larger than life. Um, yeah, absolutely great guy to so to receive this you know, award on and his honour is something that's pretty special. Now, the key to that, of course, is that you've done the race now yourself. I think he did it six times. What it is? What is it that appealed to you to make you want to go and do it? Well, I think it's just uh, excitement, you know, uh, our sport's very diverse and has so many different aspects to it and, you know, ocean racing is definitely one of them. Um, you know, I think like everyone else, you're really enjoying watching the, the Jules Verne, you know, challenges that are going on at the moment, the Vonde and, you know, hopefully the next ocean race will fire up again soon. But you know, it's definitely a, a massive part of our sport and one that's, you know, pretty exciting to watch. What were your highlights and lowlights of, of the experience? <laughs> um, yeah, I think there was, you know, definitely a lot of highlights. Um, you know, the yeah, it's, it's very hard to pick one. And you now, for me, the the low light would have, you know, obviously been when fish went over overboard, um, you know, in the middle of the Southern Ocean, and you know, definitely, you know, made it feel you know, so ha how much more real it made it feel. Um, you know, with you know, actually where you were and um, you know, the the risks that, that were being taken, but uh, it's definitely uh, yeah, pretty humbling to you know, see that that power of the ocean. Now, Magnus was, as was being said, the ultimate kind of team player, the glue in a team. And uh, until the Volvo, it was really just you and Blair. But what does the team aspect of it mean to you, both there and now with the Americas? Yeah, well, I think I've you know, been involved in many teams over my career. And, you know, before I got in the Volvo, um, you know, we'd won the Americas Cup with Team New Zealand. You know, where there's probably about 80 people in that team. Um, I think I got involved with them in about 2013. So, you know, throughout my career, you know, it's been so many teams we've been involved with and, you know, definitely had to be good in the sport of sailing. You've got to be able to work well with the team and, you know, try and get the most out of people. So, you know, to be a, try, try and lead people and, and push them to to get the most out of themselves, I think is the most important thing. Will you go again around the world? Yep. Yeah, definitely will. And that's obviously mm -hmm. after you've attended to a little bit of business that's going on behind us now because we are, in fact, standing outside the Team New Zealand base. Um, how do you juggle, say, something like the Volvo Ocean Race, sailing in one of those, you know, an offshore boat with this <coughs> AC-75? <laughs> yeah, we've definitely got a good juggle on our hands. Um, yeah, right now, we're the two biggest priorities for us, uh, you yeah, know, defending the America's Cup for New Zealand. And then, you know, as, as COVID shuffled when the, the actual Olympic Games were, we've got the, the Olympic spot for the 49er in New Zealand at the moment also. So that, that's a, a massive priority. But... Yeah, you know, then just you know, working out exactly what we do after that's kind of you know, the big question. Okay, now, first of all, of course, there is the America's Cup. You've got your new boat on the water. How do you feel you're faring? Yeah, we're pretty excited by the new boat. Um, you know, it's the culmination of a lot of hard work of a, a lot of people, a lot of development, you know, from our first boat, you know, our test boat, the 12 metre. Um, you know, to see that all come together and actually work. And you know, we've been out there four days now and you know, we're pretty excited by and what the boat can do. Sailing in home waters? Well, it's definitely pretty nice to be in home waters. Um, you know, I think especially considering the current situation with you know, COVID in a lot of spots of the world. And you know, it's definitely been interesting. This has been the, the longest I've spent in New Zealand for uh, you know, probably 15 years um, you know, without, without a trip away. So that's uh, definitely you know, pretty cool. Now we wish you well with that. And uh, at the moment, I think we might have some questions coming in from Stockholm if we can get the technology to work. Um, have we got anything coming along? Well, apparently we're waiting for some uh, some input from people who are, who are watching this around the world, wanting to uh, drop a question or two to Peter. Can we hear anything coming through? Still waiting. I think the questions are supposed to come to you. <laughs> right, okay. We're still waiting Directly. on those questions. So in the meantime, we we, have we'd like, we've, there's been a bit of an accident on the youth here. So why don't we have a chat, quick chat with, uh, with um, Zoe and Oliver. Now you two part of the very famous uh, New Zealand Yacht Club and Youth Program. How much of a sort of inspiration is Peter to you? Just watching it 
to what they do on the boat and how they sail. How they sail and do you ask your aspirations direction? Absolutely. Um, I mean, it's pretty cool to be out. We do our training and we glance over our shoulder and we see these guys ripping around you know, at um, 40 and 50 knots. And so it's pretty, pretty special to be able to see these guys doing that. It gives you a bit of drive to want to get there one day. Hopefully, that, hopefully that, that, one that one day won't be that far away because... Uh, oh, now here we go. Um, OK, Peter. Uh, well, would you do the Vendée if you were given a chance? <laughs> on your tour, eh? <laughs> I don't have any massive plans of doing the Vendée at the moment. Um, you know, spending six days by yourself uh, on a boat doesn't sound like that much fun at the moment, but, you know, never say never. Now, you don't seem to stop somebody's asking here. What's your secret force? I'm not sure. I think, different from myself, I you know, really enjoy a challenge and you know, quite like being busy. You know, we're so lucky in the sport of sailing that we've got you know, so many diverse aspects to it that you can you know, get a, a real change by just you know, taking on a different side of it. But, you know, it's jumping back and forth on the other side from the, the cup boat or you know, things like that. So, yeah, a pretty cool challenge, but you know, actually keeps things quite fresh. Now, with the training that you're undergoing here at the moment, getting ready for it, I mean, today was looking pretty much perfect. Uh, what will your plans be today? What will happen? Yeah, we're still uh, getting to the end of our commissioning phase on the, the new boat, so this will be uh, the stay on the water. Um, so, yeah, it'll be going out. We've got a, a big list of things we've got to, got to get through and sign off. Um, yeah, it's good to get okay. through a bit of uh, components of that, and then probably uh, yeah, not go around a few months. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, it was good to hear. It good. was good to it hear. It was good to hear that his interest in the Valdai Globe. It would be fun to see this super multi-talented sailor going off in the one-man round-the-world race. Yeah, and it was too bad we couldn't like text from the iPads here because yeah, yeah, I have questions. thousands of questions. <laughs> I think you know most uh, young people and old, I guess. Most sailors dream of doing even one of the things that uh, Pete has done. Uh, Volvo Ocean Race, America's Cup, uh, most oh, Worlds, everything. Olympics, and multiple of each. It's so crazy. It, it's absolutely crazy and I'm humble and impressed. Yeah, I don't know how he is as a, as a skipper and a, and a leader, um, but I can tell you a bit about uh, Magnus. It's fun to see the New Zealand guy, um, uh, Brad Jackson, for example. He worked very closely with uh, Magnus Olsson on the Ericsson 4 team, and they are pretty much the opposite of each other. Uh, I mean, Magnus, he was running this, uh, this Ericsson team. Uh, he was part of, part of the team, of course. But we got 24 nationalities in that team. And the New Zealand persons, they are very strict. They're like looking into the numbers and we Swedes, we're, we're like the middle milk. Feel, milk feel it in your butt. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> bit, go with your guts. Like that. <laughs> exactly. And it's so, so different. And I hope uh, and I think that uh, Peter Berling could get actually quite inspired from looking at what Magnus has done uh, before and even taking his incredible career even further. So, um, yeah. And I think when we see these... Um, it sounds weird that I say young guns because we're not that old, but when you see uh, new legends mm. um, being born or, or coming up in the sport of sailing in any sport, um, I think we all know that it's thanks to the legends and the role models that we have seen in the generations before in this uh, picture that we saw now from the live stream where we have Brad from one genera uh, generation who's been like coaching in yeah. the events where uh, Pete is taking part and then we have the next generation of sailors from the mm. New Zealand Yacht Squadron. It's, it's quite nice to see and it's very unique in the sport of sailing that we have the different generations coming together and really working, yeah. sometimes as a team, sometimes as coach. And Imagine these guys having to watch uh, the AC boats flying around the bay, quite inspiring I must say. I, uh, I don't think we have exactly the same uh, uh, benefits here in Sweden, but... Um. No, and <laughs> it's not without being jealous. So now I think, you know, take the image from New Zealand, present that you have the 30 degrees at home wherever you are in the world. Uh, go really quickly to grab a beer or pee, if you can do it quickly. They go quite well together, those things. They do. Yeah. But we're take a moment. A super short break and then we'll be back.
So we got contact with New Zealand again. They're going to uh, be asked some more questions and uh, we will have a nice ending to this interview piece. Yeah. Okay, I think we're hooked up again. Are you hearing us there? Yeah, yes, it's all good. We can hear you fine. Oh, good. <laughs> okay, well, we're going we're gonna to wrap it up here in, in, in a second, but just in that little gap there, we were talking about Magnus and the fact that, you know, we're, we, we are here outside the Team New Zealand headquarters, which is also, which was the Volvo headquarters. And it's, uh, you can almost feel the sort of spirit of him here, can't you? I mean, uh, Brad, he'd know all this. What would he make of what's going on today and for Pete? Oh, I, th I think he'd be amazed, with, um, especially with what Pete's done uh, with his career. I mean, he's, Magnus is there to help everyone and he's happy with everyone's um, achievements and, he's, and he puts his efforts into helping people do that. But um, no, he'd, he'd love the atmosphere the, and you know, he knows what it's like here in the Volvo stopover on the day that you're leaving and the, and the crowds and the atmosphere, he, he, he loves all that stuff. And there's uh, hopefully going to be crowds and atmosphere for you with the America's Cup. And, and maybe when you come back with the Volvo, you've come in here on a Volvo. What does it feel like? It wasn't our best league when we came in here, to be honest. <laughs> we were, um, yeah, took a pretty much risk halfway through the league and ended up off the back. But, um, yeah, it's definitely always pretty nice to sail down the coast, um, you know, into some home waters and, you know, pretty special part of the world. So I can myself imagine Magnus coming in here having witnessed on many occasions that amazing smile and I have a feeling he'd be putting on that smile in neon today watching this happen here and um, um, we wish you enormous luck Peter congratulations on another award thank you guys for coming along this morning uh, it's a privilege to be remembering Magnus through this award and also a privilege to be seeing Peter receive it a pretty monumental day and uh, we'd say goodbye now from the city of sales Thank you very much. And back to uh, a very cold and uh, wet Stockholm. And now we're going to go to uh, Australia, actually, and uh, we're going to meet a woman who worked very close to Magnus. And, uh, you know, she is actually the only female recipient of this award. Uh, and a friend of mine who sailed in the Team SCA uh, in Volvo Ocean Race, as well as in the 2001 edition of the race. So actually one of my big role models as a professional sailor, Olympian, mother, you name it. So yeah. this is Caroline Brower. Well, a very good evening to Caroline Brower. And, and Caroline, the, the, the 2019 winner of the uh, Magnus Olsen Award. Um, in 2019, I'm guessing you probably weren't expecting the kind of year we've had. How, how has your year been since you won the award? Well, my year has uh, been very quiet. I um, haven't been able to sail as much as I would have liked to. And, uh, but I do feel very fortunate to live where we live here in Australia, where uh, we have a backyard and we can still play outside, um, even though there were pretty re strict restrictions here. Um, and I was um, slowed down by force. Uh, I'm not, it's not in my nature to do that, but um, I think it's done me very well. Uh, so I've definitely seen the positive side of it. Now, of course, uh, back when you were going full tilt, as, as, as you normally do, as you just said, um, you've competed in Olympics, in, in the ocean races, um, and we this year are looking at teamwork and, and obviously a team you work with was SCA with a certain Magnus Olsen. Um, how was Magnus when it came to putting together a team? Well, I think we have Manga to thank for. Um, a lot of us girls, uh, where we are in our, in our sailing careers now, I think Manga has uh, been a huge inspiration to start with, but an amazing ambassador, an amazing mentor, an amazing coach. And uh, we've learned so much from him. And I think um, we've carried that on um, in our careers. And obviously, of course, you carried on from that SCA campaign to actually winning the ocean race with them. Um, Dong Fong uh, last time out. What did you think you took from Magna into that campaign? Well, I think when I joined Team SEA, 
I, I didn't consider myself a real team player. I came from Olympic sailing, dinghies, uh, maybe double-handed, but mostly single-handed. And um, I think uh, when joining Dongfeng, um, obviously we all get chosen because of our skills and how we are as sailors or how good we are. But I think a huge priority at Dongfeng race team is you had to be a team player. And I think I wouldn't have been chosen if I hadn't been with Team SCA and learned from what, Manga what I did. And yes, I was very fortunate um, to be part of Team SCA. And it's because of Team SCA that I was chosen for Dongfeng Race Team. Now, obviously, uh, Dongfeng were involved in a three-way fight for the last uh, ocean race uh, with a team called Brunel. Um, which featured one Peter Burling on board. Um, when you heard he was going to be involved in the race and up against you, what was the kind of feeling? Because he was coming with Olympic golds, with America's Cup victories. Well, Peter's obviously proven that he's a pretty amazing sailor um, from his experience in the Olympics and the America's Cup. So that he was going to join the Volvo Ocean Race was a no-brainer. And uh, him joining Brunel, uh, maybe not being the favourites at the beginning of the race because they didn't have as much preparation as uh, ourselves on Dongfeng and uh, Mapfre. But uh, we said to uh, each other on Dongfeng that we might not have to consider Brunel too much for the first half of the race, but we will have to watch them for the second half of the race because there are amazing sailors on that boat and they might not have as much offshore experience as many of the others, but they will learn very quickly and they did certainly prove that. So it's, uh, to me, it's a pretty obvious choice um, having Pete as the winner of the uh, Manga Olsen Award for 2020. Thank you so much, Carolyn Brower. I mean, if you would take all the laps around the world and all the years of sailing experience that we see on this show tonight, uh, <laughs> it would, it would never couple. end. I no, think. probably not. Uh, a few words about Magnus again. He was not only a really good sailor and an experienced sailor, he was also extremely interested in sports. He used to run these quizzes on board Ericsson 3. It, it wasn't all about sport, he was just a quizzing guy. But when it comes to sport, he was excellent. And this sort of spilt down on his two sons, Niklas and Joachim, uh, or a hockey player and a football player. And now we're going to meet Joachim, who is the football guy in the family. Well, we're going to turn away from sailing for a bit and we're going to talk about a, a proper sport that involves ball and everything else that we expect because we're going to be talking to Joachim Linder, um, Manja's son, who is, of course, a professional footballer in the top division in Sweden. Um, and this is all about teamwork and how teams work. Uh, so, Joachim, um, the first question is, I guess if you play football, you can't be a solo footballer. You have to play in a team. So it's fundamentally part of the game. Exactly. Maybe it's, it's just um, it's just Slatan that can can play on his own. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> no, as you said, uh, it's it's a team sport, and and you are eleven players on the pitch, and and even um, people on the bench. So um, it's it's really important that you that you play together. One thing that's always interested me is is how you find your position in a team because we all when we first kicked the ball wanted to score goals all the time but people adjust and change and find their position in the team how was your journey to find your position within the team well i think i started as as everyone else as a kid when you want to to be the the striker and score all the goals and and stuff uh, but but then when you get older i think it's it's easier to to find your position and your, your, like the position in the team also. So, we was it always a move that you enjoyed finding that position, or did you think, oh, I'd prefer to be playing there, but I can I can get my place in the team if I play here. Uh, yeah, may, maybe like that. Uh, and then I, I had like uh, some of my strengths uh, works good at 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 the defender position, um, so I think. That's a part of it too. Now, when a team is 
playing well and you're part of it that it it it's almost a transcending feeling you you it, it is one of those great moments can you put your finger on why a team can suddenly start playing really well uh, i think uh, one thing is is communication in the team it's really important uh, we have some players that are not from sweden and and doesn't speak swedish um so i think in the in the locker room and and uh, the places around the, the football pitch uh, it's important that we can can all of us can speak english so everyone understands what what we are saying and what we are doing i think it's really important now that's if you go things are going well but if things are going badly are you one of those characters who will take a grip on the situation and say we need to do this guys yeah i, I think i can i can take that um and do that uh, yeah I'm, I'm almost uh, 30 now so i i learned a lot in my career uh, so i'm not 20 anymore final thought just to mention your father was was he a football fan and did he give you any advice yeah he was he really was uh we played a lot and he he was um he was the goalkeeper and i was the the goal scorer i think i most of the time i i did um, a good shot it went in <laughs> which yeah and in team building you need confidence building so yes it was a, an early lesson learned exactly well Joachim thanks so much for for joining us and sharing something about your life in in football and uh good luck this season thank you very much So nice to, to hear Mange's son and it's fun to hear about the language barrier because that was something we worked with in the Ericsson team. Uh, we had, as I said, 24 nationalities, but on board the Ericsson 3 boat, the Scandinavian boat, Mange really wanted to uh, encourage Swedish and Scandinavian sailors to, to become professional sailors. And he initially wanted us to uh, speak uh, Swedish on board, but that wasn't really, really going well. <laughs> I can say that. Uh, it was funny. We had uh, one New Zealand guy who uh, was half Swedish. He never understood us until we started talking bad about him. It was weird. Yeah, about that. Uh, scholarships. We uh, would like to, um, to uh, present our scholarships, but uh, uh, I also wanted to say that the Mange Olsen Memorial Foundation was founded to encourage uh, the young Swedish sailors who, like Mange, uh, work hard with a positive attitude to reach international success. Yeah, so there is a balance here. We have both the big prize, the one that is uh, given to, I guess, the role model of all, all the young sailors around the world. But then there is the Swedish part. And now yeah. we have come to the Swedish part. So we will recognize and give this scholarship to two sailors today. And because of this COVID situation and the studio being quite small, we have recorded the interviews with these two sailors previously here today. So we will now hand over to first an introduction and a presentation and then to an interview with our first scholar. The Mange Olsson Scholarship 2020 goes to someone that personifies the sport of sailing and is one of Sweden's best sailors. The same way as Mange, Marlin Tengström is happy, positive and humble. The foundation looks forward to supporting her future in sailing. We actually do have Marlin in the studio today, but according to today's theme, where we have our guests a little bit further away to keep to the corona restrictions, we have Marlin over here. So huge congratulations, Marlin, on receiving the Mange Olsson Foundation Scholarship. 
Thank you so much. It's such a big honor to receive this in the name of Mang Olson. And I'm just so happy to get, to get this motivation and to keep getting better at sailing. I really I get that. I know that every single uh, crown that you get or every pound you get as a contribution to your sailing is really helps you uh, going forward. And we heard part of the nomination to why you got the scholarship in the film. But I also know that uh, the longer version or the lengthier version mentions your successful 2019. Why don't you tell us a bit about why that was successful and what you achieved during last year? Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, we had a really good 2019 season. Uh, and I sailed the Olympic class Fortnite FX, as you have seen in the film, uh, together with Vilma Bobek. And we actually managed to take the bronze at the European Championship last year. So we're really happy about that. And then we also managed to take a silver at the Junior World Championship. So yeah, we had a really good season. Uh, and I, I know, <laughs> because I follow uh, the 49er sailing on the live streams as much as I can. I think it's the coolest class out there. Uh, and another thing that I want to lift is that uh, Malin really points out that uh, sailing is a team sport. And I think everyone would agree, especially Magnus, and uh, when we say that sailing is a team sport, what is the team behind you and both um, on land, but also <laughs> behind you in the boats? Yeah, so with me in the boat, I have Vilma, as I pointed out earlier, and she's the best uh, skipper I could imagine having beside me. And we work really closely. We're almost like a married couple by now, <laughs> travel together, sailing together, doing yeah, practically everything. Uh, and then, of course, we have a bigger team behind us with the coach and training partners and sponsors and all that. So it's a really big team behind us and family, of course, all supporting us to our goals. And and I guess that uh, you will be able to get some good tips from Peter Burling since he is uh, he's the top, not only in the America's Cup, but also in the 49er class. So this could be a good match. Yeah, yeah, that's a really good point And I really are looking forward to talking to him and get some tips and coaching from him. Yeah, that's cool. I think we do see a little bit of a theme in the sport of sailing when we have this kind of event where the 49er and skiff sailors are the ones uh, stepping yeah. up and uh, becoming the next big names. So thank you so much for joining us, Vilma. Uh, ah. Malin, <laughs> sorry. I think you get so close together. Yeah. Right? I think you get <laughs> shot normally if you call uh, the helm by the skipper name yeah. or the other way around. But uh, anyways, thank you so much for joining us, Malin. And uh, good luck in the future. We will definitely be following your uh, career in this next Olympics or the one after that. Thank you so much. We are back live in the studio and we are so proud of the sailors receiving these scholarships. Uh, and let's not waste any time. I think uh, we dig in to the next one, right? Definitely. but. Um... Wouldn't you? I would just want to comment. Wouldn't you just like to go sail 49er? Isn't that like just the best boat ever? It's definitely the coolest boat ever. I think uh, I see some sailors now being out in the very like warm and nice waters and <laughs> ripping. But, yeah. uh, I oh. also have seen these struggling uh, Swedish sailors who go out in November uh, outside of uh, Longedra or, mm. or here in Stockholm. I mean, uh, yeah, I think that's, that's the way... even more impressive. <laughs> It's that's the way of being uh, the Swedish sailor. You don't always get to go to the sun and the, and the nice fly fish who fly around you. Well, well, Please. enough about that. Now you, we, we will show you an interview we did earlier today with uh, the second scholar. The Mange Olsson Scholarship 2020 goes to a successful and talented sailor with a dream to sail in the sport's biggest races. Not bringing his bow up. On the inside, Montonberg looking to try and lay. Remember, he is 2 0 down here, so this is must win for Swedish sailor Montonberg. The Swedish team out in front. Here he goes. But what a beautiful job. Early set and rolling right into a jibe, Taylor Canfield. Holmberg rolls into a jibe as well. There's likely a penalty there from Holmberg. We'll see what happens. Green flag, no penalty. Canfield is not on top. Canfield is being. 
bunched up. He is up against the ropes. Homburg there coming underneath him, controlling that situation all the way through, dominating the US team. And Sweden now out in front in this match. What a move for Homburg. Mons Homburg, a tiny bit early, but he, I think he's going to hold on to that inside line. And Homburg powering along, great job of his acceleration with a much shorter piece of runway to build over. And he is holding on to that inside, he is not going to go down easily. This has all the makings of a spectacular match. Both boats flying into mark number one, Holmberg to Lourdes, holding off the world champion Phil Robertson to windward. Holmberg, meanwhile, rounding the left one, ahead by about two and a half to three lengths. Like Mange, Mons Holmberg is a team player and the foundation looks forward to supporting his future career. I get goosebumps from watching those kinds of videos with the match racing commentator going off. Big congratulations, Mons. It felt like you really have been up there in the elite uh, sailing. Yeah, thanks, Gustav. It's uh, first of all a great honor because uh, Mange is a legend and, uh, and uh, because of all the uh, talented sailors that have received this performance. So, yeah, thank you. Yeah, and he really loved the, the team playing part of this sport. And I know from before that you've been into hockey. I mean, you started with sailing when you were a kid, but you didn't really take off with the elite challenges. But you, you really went for it when you got into the, to the team part of it. Can you tell me about how you look at that? Yeah, I probably have a, had a bit of a different path than many other Swedish sailors. Uh, started racing when I was 13 and then went straight into Oris Fiva and then uh, the Laser and then 29er and, and kind of started really doing results in the match racing where I really enjoyed the team sports uh, or the team side of it, as you said. So uh, yeah, it so went, went on since then. And you must agree with me that uh, since the M32 got into the match racing tour, it whole, it, everything got a whole lot more fun. Yeah, I think especially for us younger sailors and especially for me, because it was a great opportunity. Uh, everybody almost like started on zero, so we saw a big chance to, <coughs> to get in and um, really establish ourselves on the tour. So um, we saw the opportunity and I think we took it quite well as well. You know, that's what they say about uh, like Peter Burling and all the new kids, that uh, they are much more adoptive when it comes to sailing these really fast boats. And now with the M32, you might have a good path to uh, continuing on. W what's your next goal? Yeah, I hope so. Um, I think uh, it's a bit unclear, in, like obviously with Corona and everything, but also the way the match race tour has gone. So I think for now, just... Uh, just going to wait and see what happens with everything and I think the match racing tour is on its way back to being a really good thing again and, <clears throat> and continue doing the M32 over in the US like I've been doing the last year and um, yeah just wait for the next uh, good opportunity I guess. I think uh, yeah. I, I think it's just so uh, cool to hear that someone is going the unconventional route. Uh, in, in Sweden we have a tendency to go kind of the, the perfect way through yeah. the opties and the dinghies and then going on to possibly match racing or, or, or quitting, worst case. So I think uh, keep going with what you're doing and do it differently. I think that's more the international route. So if we look at a lot of the international stars in sailing and you look back, some might have started when they were 15 and some started with something completely different. So there's really no right or wrong. So uh, keep it up. It's uh, super impressive. Congratulations. I will. Thanks, guys. One of the most important things when it comes to uh, getting a professional sailing career is uh, contacts. And that's what's so good about this scholarship, that it's, it's about, you get a, a price check, but it's so much more because you, you get contact with the top guys and girls in the sport of sailing. And just to be able to go into their base and have a look and say hello to other people in, their, in these teams, 
that could be an opening thing. I know, for example, Emil Jarru, who was one of the scholars before, he uh, he got the opportunity to uh, uh, get in contact with Ben Ainsley, and they still have contact. So this is really, really an interesting thing. And uh, yeah. Yeah, and you can really in here we just see a few of those um, images of how some of the younger sailors are meeting the legends. Uh, yeah, it's we cool have for, to see. For example, uh, Santiago Lange and Stan Honey. Uh, I mean, I know Santiago Lange from before. He's one of the true legends. He's been sailing Olympic regattas now, and he's still he's is sixty three or something. He's still in the sport. He's still up there, and he is so good at talking to people and and when you get to that age Santi is kind of like Magnus that he really wants the sport of sailing to grow and and to contri contribute with all his knowledge and give back which I think is so nice and it's nice that we have this uh, Mange award that um, that we actually give them some credit for it yeah and I, I don't think we can promise anything but we are looking forward to see the possibilities that this year's uh, young recipients are, are getting from this scholarship, not just money-wise, but also in terms of possibly uh, yeah. connecting with the Kiwis and uh, looking into what's happening next year. No pressure, Peter Burling, but we <laughs> really think that you should give this Swedes, this Swedes some um, invitations. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, but talking about New Zealand, we're going now to uh, a legend in, uh, in the America's Cup, but mostly maybe with Brett and Volvo Ocean Race. But now he is the CEO of Team New Zealand, Grant Dalton. Well, Grant Dalton now joins us here at the Magnus Olsen Award Ceremony um, from the Team NZ base in uh, Auckland uh, Basin, remarkably. Um, so, Grant, fantastic you could join us here. Um, now, the award has just been given to your teammate, Peter Burling. Um, <laughs> can you just sort of sum up what a remarkable young sailor this man is? Well, the, he's the top of a new generation, really. And I, I don't think there'd be too many people would argue that uh, he's the best in the world at the moment. And, you know, when you couple him with um, people like Blair Turk and Glenn Ashby, I mean, they're, they're a pretty lethal combination. And I think one of his skills is he's also very mechanically minded. Not only is he an, an exceptional yachtsman of our generation, uh, but he's also mechanically minded. So he's very much... Um, suited for this generation of sailing where you actually it's as much about knowing how to create the boat as it is to sailing the boat so he's exceptional in that respect and and you know we're a big organization he's part of a a team but he's a you know he's a pretty important part of that team and also he's olympic gold he's come third in the volvo he seems to be able to do anything he can turn his hand to yeah, and I think, you know, if I, I watch the Volvo pretty closely and, and Bao, you know, this is my, I don't think this is being unfair to Bao or anybody. I thought once Pete spent more time on the boat that I thought the performance of the boat improved. Now, it might be coincidental, but from what I see of the guy every day of our lives, I mean, we work right next to each other every day. I don't think that is coincidental. So it, it, when you have that skill, sailing, sailing, no matter what type of sailing but the is it we just take a 49 along with um blair their agility and ability to be faster uh, is remarkable even when they climb back in a 49 or after being out of it um having done the round the world race so he's only improving actually which is a bit scary for everybody else <laughs> in the world but he's only improving as he matures and starts to learn more team dynamics of, of living within a big organization now, it's interesting you bring up team because sort of teamwork is, is one of the themes of, of this year's ceremony. Um, now, you've run a few successful campaigns. In, how can you sum up your success as, as, as someone who can run a campaign, run a team? Because this guy I admired as a CEO and um, um, he always seemed to have time and he always seemed to be on it. And I said, what's his secret? you know, of having this sort of availability and never appearing to be particularly worried. He said, I just simply employ better people than me and then I manage the culture around them. And so I've always remembered that as well. And I think that's, you know, kind of the secret. And we have a really strong culture here at uh, Emirates Team New Zealand, and we always have. Uh, and I think also the around the world races boats I had. So to me, that's a really, really key part. You've got to get good people, but you want to have better people than yourself in whatever area and then just manage the process. 
Now you mentioned the, the Volvo, the round the world race. One person you sailed against often was Magnus Olsen. Um, how do you remember him as a competitor and, and, and the way he fitted or led a team? Well, I think there's two ways of thinking of Magnus. And uh, from a competitor's point of view, it was never better demonstrated. And I'm going to forget the year here when they took that flyer just out of New Zealand, um, basically tacked away from the fleet and and uh, it was Ericsson. And I mean, for all intents and purposes, we'd lost their minds and then ended up picking and in, getting into something and just winning that leg around the horn. And that was Magnus and his competitive spirit and his ability to take be a risk taker, which is the hallmark of all good skippers, really. They've got to be risk takers. They've got to be competitive. And once they got ahead, no one could grind them down either. So that that told me a lot about his kind of um, mental fortitude to be able to take such a risk um, in terms of a course and also then to be able to hang on to it and just push that boat as they did. The other part of him is really the, the cultural part of him, really what I was talking to before, that, I mean, everybody will always describe him as the guy that never stopped smiling, was always laughing, was always happy. And I'm sure he was in some ways, but I'm sure he also had his, you know, kind of dark moments in the night like we all do. But that glue, that magic glue that you always need in a team, which is normally provided by one or two depending on the size of the team, was very evident in Magnus. So you've got the whole package, really, this competitive, hard-edged instinct, uh, but also this magic glue from a cultural point of view to hold the team together. Finally, Grant, and I'll be thrown out of the ceremony if I don't mention this, uh, you've obviously just launched the Team NZ boat. How's that going? How's the competition going? How's it all looking? Yeah, the boat's quite different as people, you know, we're in a yachting environment here, so people will have seen how f different it is. And it, it, it isn't really never, I mean, I guess a competition is looking and saying, well, that looks like a big risk. But it does, it never has never felt like a risk. And having now sailed it, well, we only launched it last week, but we've already been on the water a lot. Uh, it certainly doesn't feel like a risk now. And it's doing all the things that we thought it would in simulation and the VPP. So, you know, kind of, who knows, but we're happy where we are right as today. We wouldn't change anything. And by now, normally you think, shit, I wish we'd done A, B or C. In terms of the competition, I mean, it's cliche-ish, but I just don't know. They're all sailing hard. Uh, they're all uh, arrived to race, not arrived to uh, enjoy the scenery because they can go places here where you can't in other countries in the world. And that makes them all dangerous. And, you know, if you look at the calibre of the guys, um, None of them have come here to get beaten by either of each other or by us. So we've got to be very wary of what's coming at us. And these are strong teams. They're well-funded and they run well. Well, Grant, I know how busy you are keeping everything on the, on the tracks over there in New Zealand. Thanks so much for joining us. And, uh, yeah, thanks very much indeed from Magnus Olsen Award Ceremony and everybody here. And thank you for having me. And, I mean, it's, it's great that this tradition... Uh, is, is living on year after year through Richard Brucius and um, everybody around him. So long may it continue and long may the recipients be of the quality of people like Peter Burling. So it's almost goosebumps to hear the legend Grant Dalton speak about uh, all the sailing going on. And also I'd like to talk a little bit about what he said about Magnus, that he thinks he's, he's, he must be one of those guys who just uh, goes for it all the time, but also the guy who always laughs. And maybe that was not always true. And I know from behind the scenes sailing with the Ericsson 3 boat that uh, it was more or less true. But he was uh, going 100% all the time until he ran into the wall and he could fall asleep in the middle of the boat just sitting with a with, with a ball of, of porridge in his hand and falling asleep and then wakes up and then it's time for watch again <laughs> so he was an interesting and really a really cool character also about his uh, uh, Grant Dalton's talk about being very into technical stuff now when if you want to become a professional sailor I just wanted to say to all the uh, Swedes and young people out there that there is there are more ways to get into sailing than just being like Peter Burling, the extreme good sailor who always succeeds in everything. You can always come in if you're a half decent sailor, but you're good at something else. For example, like being an engineer like Magnus was.
Exactly, or a medic or a nutritionist. I think there are so many things that you need on a boat when it comes down to it. Yeah, we re- even had on the Ericsson 3 boat, we even had a, a farmer. He was a really good sailor, super strong, but he was good with hydraulics. Yeah. So, yeah, all kinds of ways. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, as we're wrapping up, you start seeing a red thread in all of these guests that we've talked to today. And I think it's all about uh, team spirit and the team you have behind you. And, uh, you know, we also talked a bit about soccer and in soccer, you're 11 people on 11 people on the field. You know, if Magnus were to gather his his 11 people on the field, you can really see that that would be pretty much the strongest team in the world. And everyone speaks so highly of Magnus. Uh, yeah. I get uh, a little touched, actually. Yeah, me too. Yeah, uh, for sure. It's really cool. And there's also a big team behind this uh, Mange Olsson Memorial Foundation, not just of sailors, but also of companies and people who um, keep donating uh, yeah. money and efforts every year to make this happen. It's a one of the massive things about being successful in the sport as well is being able to talk with companies and getting their interest. And that was something that Mange was also very good at. And he kept uh, contact with, uh, for example, uh, Carl Henrik Swanberg who was uh, running Ericsson when we had that big uh, campaign. Exactly. And I actually want to read, uh, because Carl Henrik Svanberg is our last guest today, uh, and he will wrap this evening up for us. But I think there is a quote that was said on Mange's uh, funeral by Hen- uh, Carl Henrik, actually. And it's um, that Mange could turn defeats into new energy. He could turn exhaustion into strength. He could turn despair into new hope. And if you want to get a little deep, you could really say that that's more relevant today than ever in, in the 2020 that we have had so far. And we're all looking into 2021, not just sailing wise, but also, you know, looking yeah. into a brighter, brighter future. So yeah. with those words in mind, let's welcome one of another one of Magnus's friends and one of the founders of the Magne Olsson Memorial Foundation, Carl Henrik Svanberg. Dear friends, dear sailors, and dear, dear supporters of our foundation, the Mange Olsson Prize. This is, of course, very special circumstances. This year has been a, a difficult year. Who would have thought, if someone would have said a year ago that we would catch a flu in March that would lock down basically the world and even postpone the Olympic Games? It has, of course, been difficult, and many have struggled. Someone has even... some. Some here and there has even lost loved ones. So when we get into the holiday season, we need to remember that. But of course, many of us that have that love sailing, we haven't been on the water in the way that we used to be. But we are here to celebrate the biggest sailors. And we are so glad to see this program and see everybody and see the enthusiasm. Uh, the winner, when we announced uh, Pete Burling, there was this, I saw a, a headline in the newspaper that said that Pete had been awarded one of the greatest awards in the sailing sport. And that's how we feel about it. But we're happy that others do too. We wanted to celebrate the greatest sailor. But we also do that with celebrating, as you so well know, uh, also the upcoming stars. And, and we do so today. We have celebrated Mons and Malin. And we are, we are so happy for them. Uh, maybe one day they will be up there and compete for the big Mange Olsson prize. Sailing is, is a difficult sport. Someone said to me once that it's like, uh, it's like downhill slalom and playing chess at the same time. It takes skill, it takes intelligence, it takes determination, lots of lots of practice. It is maybe the ultimate sport. And when I see what, what Pete has done, and he is not much more than six, seven years older than Mons and Marlin, you can imagine what kind of inspiration that, that is. We also, when we award the prize, we have, we're asking Pete to do something in his home country for the young ones, the come, coming and rising stars. And we have, we have now awarded, this, this is the seventh year, we have awarded seven Sailors of the world, the greatest I know and I've met. And we have awarded 15 uh, in, uh, scholarships for the young ones that have a, a fantastic future. But thanks so much for being with us today. And next year, I do hope that we can come together and be out on the water again. Thank you so much.
thank you so much for that. And now it's time to wrap up and we want to extend a huge thank you to, to everyone that has been tuning in. Uh, we just heard that uh, it's people from all over the world and we're so grateful for everyone that watched to remember Magnus and to honor the award winners today, both the scholars and Peter Berling. So thanks for watching. Thanks to everyone who is making this possible. And thanks for having us. Thanks for talking to me yeah. telling uh, <laughs> yeah, all these thank cool you. stories. And we, we should really keep uh, the Magnus spirit up now. It's really important now to think about Magnus. I think you will get some energy if you get, go back and look at some videos and uh, get through this uh, pandemic with a smile and cheers. Cheers. Have a beer. <laughs>